everyone. Welcome to Video Club Reviews. I'm joined by my brother, Jim. Hello. My brother from another mother, Rob. And my sister from another Mr. Teal. This week, I, uh, I chose the movie Finch. It's on Apple TV, currently released uh, November 5th. Uh, uh, a robot is built to protect the life of his creator's dog is the premise of this movie. Uh, and I'd love to hear everybody's spoiler-free thoughts on this. Jim, do you want to start? Yeah, sure. So just as a basic thing, I, I liked this movie. I thought it was good. It has has some issues like like anything, but overall, I enjoyed it. I had a I had a good time watching it. So Finch, um, as a character-driven story, succeeds in taking us on like an emotional, personal journey of the main character named Finch. As Finch, Tom Hanks turns in yet another amazing performance in what is him acting by himself, <laughs> or essentially by himself. He's got a dog and a robot alongside him. The relationships between Finch, the adorable dog, and the witty robot had good parts, humor, life lessons. Um, there was emotion sprinkled throughout, sometimes a little bit kind of, I, I felt like they were trying to make me more emotional than the scene necessarily warranted. The cinematography is stunning. The VFX are exceptional. The performances by Hanks as Finch and Caleb Laundry Jones as the robot Jeff were absolutely top notch. That was all against the backdrop of somewhat uh, like a formulaic and predictable and simple story. There were some world building elements they touched on that were foreshadowed that didn't receive a satisfactory outcome or payoff. But overall, I recommend anyone watching. It's a good take on the post-apocalyptic genre slash the Tom Hanks being alone genre, which yes, I'm now considering that its own genre. Yeah, what, what, just... what makes a genre? <laughs> Two movies? He's now three. I, I consider Terminal. Cast away yeah, in this, terminal. so he now has his own genre of the Tom Hanks being alone genre. So yeah, overall, I like the movie. Um, it was great. It was pretty simple. Pretty simple story, though. Yeah. Did you watch it with your dog? I watched it with my uh, my two sons and my dog. Yes. <laughs> and my youngest boy went upstairs crying at one point because something made him sad. So. <laughs> no. I found I found out about it the next day. My my wife told me that he came up. He was like, she was like, "Is the movie you were watching scary or sad?" And I was like, "It was sad." Yes. Rob, Aww. what did you think? I liked the movie. It was good. I hadn't heard anything about it previously when you suggested, like, "Yeah, I'll check it out." And then I hadn't seen a trailer, didn't even hear, didn't know anything about it. It was good. I definitely similar uh, thought process to what Jim said. It's that. It, it touched on a couple different aspects that didn't have any follow through, but it was a beautiful looking movie and a lot of scenes were fantastic. And the idea of the robot and everything else was, it was good. I liked it quite a bit. I did feel that it was, it was sad in some aspects and it's, uh, didn't get the warm and fuzzy feeling after you watched it, like everybody wins kind of movie, but it's not the mist either. So everybody dies. So it's somewhere in the middle of somewhat nice and somewhat depressing. It's entertaining. And Teal, what did you think? Yeah, I guess similar to Rob, I uh, did not nearly know anything about it going in, which has kind of been a personal choice for me lately to not watch, I don't watch trailers, I don't watch anything anymore, because I find they just give too much to, uh, much away ahead of time, and then I don't enjoy it. So the last year or so, I've just not been watching trailers, and I've been enjoying movies a bit more. Yeah, I knew it was a man and a dog and a robot, and the robot or the dog belonged to somebody, or both. I wasn't sure. That was kind of all I had. Absolutely beautiful. It was beautifully done. The main question is why? <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Uh, and I agree with all of you. It's a great point. And um, this film was released to mixed reviews. A lot of the same thing that you guys said, uh, basically stemming from people saying it was a lack of originality in the post-apocalyptic genre. Which, I mean, I think that's kind of dumb. Post-apocalyptic, I'm always going to enjoy a post-apocalyptic movie. And I thought it did have some originality. Like, I've never seen anybody, any movie where somebody had a pet and they created a robot for the sole purpose of taking care of their pet. It was kind of a cool idea. It wasn't deep, for sure, but it's kind of like a nice, light <laughs> movie. And that's all I really want from my movies these days. I don't need a lot of depth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what? That's a good point, actually. Like, like wait, right now with what's going on and stuff, it just... Yeah, it was a nice, like, feel, feel good movie. Like, it just yeah. felt, it just felt good. Like, yeah. And it's super interesting right now, considering a lot of these movies were made pre-pandemic, right? And then released post-pandemic. I think uh, the pandemic actually happened, like, they said two days before they finished shooting. So it's kind of an interesting twist, right? To watch something like this, having yeah. gone through that. I, it's kind of nice that it wasn't so dark and it was a little bit lighter. Anyway, I think mm -hmm. we can probably jump into some more spoiler territory so yeah before I, it, before so. we do I, I would say too like I, I don't know if i really if it really came across what i was trying to say in my little my little blurb there but like i really i thought it was a good movie i just thought it wasn't great but i, I really liked it like it was enjoyable and i thought yeah. tom hanks tom hanks being in a movie where it's like just him acting against like 
really nobody else like he's that's like his like bread and butter like he if it was anybody else trying to do that i don't know if it would have been as good but because it was him and he carried it so well it made you it made you like the movie because you always like performances done by tom hanks like he's just such a likable actor right and all of his roles he can he can play likable really well and there's moments in the, in the movie where he's not likable but you still you still buy it yeah so. and i think tom hanks is like the one actor that i could actually sit through an entire movie of it just being tom hanks right yeah exactly it's like the only actor i'd want to watch we watched him act with a volleyball so <laughs> pretty much <laughs> he's amazing yeah. right yeah, a, a dog is way better than a volleyball all right so yeah getting into uh spoiler spoilers spoileries you've been warned okay. You've been warned. Do you guys have any? Uh, bye. If you have, if you don't want to spoil it, bye. Any uh, fun facts or deeper discussion? I have found one fact about this. It's uh, Fitch's small robot named Dewey, and apparently it's a nod to uh, the robots Huey, Louie, and Dewey in a film, uh, Silent Running, in 1972, where guys. I saw that too, and I didn't know what that meant. Have you seen that movie? I haven't. And um, then, I'm, then it brings my my mind around to uh, Scrooge McDuck and his little the little ducks were Huey, Dewey, and Louie. So I was like, "What? I wonder if that came like tied all the way through." Anyways, that's my weird random fact about the show. Um, did you guys see? I read that a lot of the movie actually ended up on the cutting room floor. They'd filmed a lot uh, extra once it was just Jeff and Goodyear. They like ran into other survivors and stuff. And oh, there was like a couple of big names that I'm suddenly blanking on. Does anyone remember? Nope. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> I didn't read this. I didn't read this fact. Oh, they like had a lot extra and, and then the pandemic happened and they were like, this is maybe a little bit too dark. And they, they cut a whole bunch of it out. So it could have been a completely oh, different see. ending apparently, which makes me wonder if they're like leaving room for a, a sequel perhaps of their adventures. Yeah. It definitely had that feel at the end. Like I could easily see this being at least if not two movies, like a franchise. Or well. Right. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the robot was strong enough he picked up the freaking rv like he could smash people but yeah it wasn't that kind of movie and i'm kind of glad that it wasn't it yeah, wasn't that right. movie yeah oh i just um for me <laughs> like i like the road trip movies and i like when there's this urgency and this thing that's happening i get really stressed out like how many times when there's danger you're gonna stop and just watch watch the danger for a while if there's a giant storm coming maybe get off the windmill can we like pick it up yeah. but i'm in this constant state of like a little bit stressed out and i was kind of really stressed out the like the entire time because i introduced so, this danger and then it doesn't pay off but it's still like you know eating away at the back of your mind because you know it's around and it's stressful. you're not quite sure how close it is or like how how urgent yeah. it is there just always seem to be danger but yeah. how dangerous yeah i totally noticed that too yeah. yeah just that sense of constant like tension you know urgency but then they're not always acknowledging it but they put yeah. it there for you they started like, strong you need to with release that. It. <laughs> yeah. They started strong with that tension of the storm and the UV and the temperature. And you're like, God, man, this is like really an inhospitable place to live. Yeah. And then it became less serious as the movie's going until like it, it it became like then he showed like his hand out there and it like, cooked him. It's like man, it's like it's really this is like a killer, but then they don't touch it anymore. Like there was no on the tornado all of a sudden, Aspect. he's outside in shorts and a t-shirt, just, like, walking around. Yeah, but because, like, because the ozone is Swiss cheese. Like, <laughs> that, well, that was the cheesy part of it. He was previous, yeah. I'm guessing, in a holy part of said cheese. Right. Yeah. That's by the that cheese. Was my guess. There's a couple of things. Like, they, then the scavenger and the booby trap, and then, like, Dewey gets killed. And then it's a trap, and this, like, Cadillac chases him, and then they don't. And it's probably what you were saying, Tiffany, is that they got cut off. So they probably would have attached, there would have been at least that aspect would have been touched again in the story. And then you would have got a sense of maybe if there was cannibals or, or mean people and all that stuff. But they just kind of like, they showed a car. They didn't show any other person. And then there was it. There was no more. So it's like, okay. It's kind of like unrealized I, kind of a plot there. But then, I'm kind of glad they didn't go any further with the the with like the the car chasing them from the hospital though because that's just my take on it is i kind of felt like the whole i felt the whole actual point of the movie was tom hanks his character as uh the heck was his name in the movie finch finch, finch, finch. yeah titular finch the name of the um, movie the name of the movie yeah i was trying to oh, think of his yeah. last name because it was like wine uh, weinberger or something or weinberg Weinstein. yeah weinberg i read a review that called him goldstein i was like that's not right um no but it was kind of like a journey of him acknowledging a bunch of like regrets in his life 
he had had all this time alone where he had the the regret of like the guilt of not helping the family who was attacked by the mean people that were out there right and ever since then he's avoiding people and people are danger just him he, it's like he knows his life is ending so he's trying to check off a bunch of boxes of things that he regrets in his life like not traveling like not going to san francisco to see where his dad possibly was from the original postcard um not taking care of the little girl so he is doing anything he can to take care of the dog because the dog was the little girl's right and so yeah. like the whole movie really is just about him trying to make right with things he feels are like his own personal baggage before he passes and that was the big takeaway i got from it so the whole thing with like that car showing up i really just took it as like showing that he it allowed him to have a moment to, to explain to jeff that so it was all just him bouncing stuff off jeff to clear his own his own baggage is, is kind of the big like overarching theme i got from the movie which was really i thought a nice thing like you people pass on and they've got things they don't get to deal with he knew he was dying and he didn't have any other people to like talk to or express his regrets to so he made jeff to look after the dog but jeff ended up having the like side effect of being someone to help him i guess pass along in peace and i don't think he intended that when he made jeff but i think that was just the nice thing and so to me that was the really big story of the movie yeah. that i that i really liked and so i liked that it didn't delve off into like bad people and cannibalism and like all that stuff it was really trying to tell one little story and it really only told one story which is why it was so simple uh, i was curious what you guys thought about uh like the evolution of the robot throughout the movie um whether it be just like the story of the robot himself and how he changed or uh like the mechanics of the robot what did you think about that i did not expect it to have a magnetic can opener for a centerpiece on his chest that was actually a surprise oh shit. Like he expected going. it either yeah i know the robot's yeah. like, oh shit <laughs> Yeah, so clearly, he has, like, like a dog, you kind of have to open its food. So. Right, yeah. that, that yeah. was like clearly he's like he went, all of the design went for taking care of the dog. <laughs> that was not like a superpower to to defend against marauders and bandits and cannibalism. Like he didn't have like a laser beam come out of his chest. He had a can opener. That was <laughs> that, I thought about yeah. that afterwards, and I had a chuckle about that. That was fun. I really, I really liked Jeff. I thought he was uh, Caleb La Laundry Jones. I don't know if it's Laundry or Landry, but Caleb Landry, Landry Jones. He did an amazing job. Like, but like the way that his speech got progressively better and more like defined as he got older and learned more and like he was simple and he learned more like he really struck me as like a robot who had like ai which is basic like he was just fed a bunch of books and in basic information but then he like slowly built a personality over the course of however long i thought is the sense i got but it was really yeah. cool to watch the actor like change the way he spoke and like the cadence of his like dialect and stuff was really neat and the actor um the voice actor also was physically acting the robot too and then they did cgi after the fact so i thought that was cool yeah. sorry teal go ahead you're gonna say something which actually goes well with that the body language that they chose to give the robot is very like like hunch and passive and submissive it's just the interesting choices that they made for how they had the robot be yeah he could react with and his body and you felt the emotion that he was trying to portray like oh he's sad or he's dejected or whatever the robot yeah. was was breathing in some instances, and when he was stressed out, he was taking deeper breaths, like he was trying to calm down. I was, thought that was like, it doesn't need to, but it uh, definitely put some physicality, some hum, human feel to the robot. And that's probably the best part about this movie is the robot. Yeah. yeah. And Dewey. I love Dewey. Oh, can we talk about Dewey? Yeah. It's really I, just, sad. I felt bad for Dewey the whole, the whole time, man. He's like a little Wally. <laughs> yeah. He gets yeah. his eyes taken, and then he's only got one eye. He's got like an eye patch, basically, for the half <laughs> yep. movie. And then he just uh, unceremoniously, and then like it just happens, and then that's it. And well, that's it, and you're like goodbye. Yeah. See you yeah. Later, he's got a munched up and you know glorified little shopping basket. I knew it was gonna <laughs> happen, like, and you knew it was gonna happen like five minutes before it actually happened because they like yeah. foreshadow it. And you're like, oh no. It's interesting that uh, you compared him to Wally because my thought was I typically hate the way robots are portrayed in movies. Uh, like, I Robot. What's his name? Sunny. Oh yeah. And uh, Gigolo Joe. <laughs> I just I don't like robots in movies. I'm like they're stupid. Yeah. But this kind of harkened back to like a Pixar style robot almost. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking about Wally -E too with both of them. I'm like, oh, they're just they're so likable, <laughs> and sweet. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of empathy for them. It was crazy, and I don't know. I don't think there's very many movies that have like the protagonist is like, yeah, I'm I the him um living the way he was and all those books and everything else and a dying of ionization radiation um made me feel like this is very similar to uh i am legend 
Like he's the only guy there. He's all this knowledge. He's teaching himself how to do and take, like he built the robot. Like, I mean, he knew what he was doing to a degree as he tells later in the story, but he did everything. So I got that sense. I was like, oh man. So it would have been kind of cool to see some more of that. Like he seemed very, very intelligent and, uh, but very, very reminiscent to I am legend kind of teaching himself how to survive all by himself. And yeah. having a dog in it. Actually, I am legend. Jesus, he had a dog in it too. That yeah. was his only companion. Which I guess <laughs> for me, uh, I might be a little bit of a pessimistic patty, but mm-hmm. it just I can't help but feel like why did we need to have this story? What was so valuable about the story that we haven't actually already heard quite a few times before? I just you know, there was the environmental stuff, which just was very on the nose. But I just, again, I, I don't know. I guess I kept watching and wanting to connect stronger to it or feel like I was learning something, getting a story, getting a moral, getting a something. And I just kind of feel like I was left wanting more. I'm wondering why was this story so important to tell? Yeah, like it started down a bunch of those paths but didn't continue down them. Like it like poked yeah. at a bunch of like potential stories and then it just like steered clear of them. That's why, like I was saying before, I, I thought the for me the through story was just was just the actual character of Finch like coming to terms with his death and like airing stuff out. But that doesn't even really start until the last like half back half of the movie, and it wasn't yeah. really obviously the point of the story. It just to me, it, I made that the point for me because I felt like you were like there was a bunch of things where I was like there's there wasn't really like a clear defining point of the story other than protect dog. But then I'm like okay, I'm gonna look yeah. at it as if the point of the story is like this guy gets a chance to, like, air his grievances before he dies. At least that's what I told myself, but I don't even know if that was the point of the story. It wasn't clear what the overarching like that, theme I, was supposed I to like be. That. I was just going to say, uh, again, like, going back to if things hadn't been cut out, what kind of movie would it have been? And the reason why it was... The reason why it came out when it came out is because the director um, was working on Game of Thrones. So he had to push it back because he was committed to Game of Thrones. Um, and he also directed this uh, Battle of the Bastards episode, which I just thought was interesting because that was he won an Emmy, won an Emmy for that episode. He directed a bunch of good stuff. Actually, I was looking up his mm-hmm. uh, he hasn't really I think he's done one movie, which was Repo, which was I, I saw that I did see that movie. Not a great movie. Um, but he directed episodes of Fringe, which I loved Fringe back when it was out. True Detective, Banshee, which mm-hmm. Banshee's a deep cut, but I, I watched all of Banshee. Um, Altered Carbon, the first season, a good season of Altered Carbon, and then like six episodes of Game of Thrones. So he did like, he's done like really excellent TV shows, like some of my favorite TV shows. Yeah. But uh, mm-hmm. th- yeah, this is like his first movie since 2010 when he did Repo, which didn't do well. And it was beautifully done. Like I don't actually have any critiques on the movie itself. It was beautifully shot. The imagery was incredible. Acting was great. Like, the CGI was very well done. Like everything about it, it, all the boxes are checked. Like I have no complaints about the movie, at, like visually or anything about it, except that I just I don't know missed. why I needed to see it. It was lacking in story. Lacking in story. Yeah. It just, why it just did a we, little. as a like community, as a society, what did this bring to us that was fulfilling that we haven't already been told? I guess. Yeah. yeah. Why was this new and exciting? Do you, uh, I, like, I watched it with my kids. I don't know. Do you guys think that it, this is a family movie? I want, I wondered that. I kept forgetting that we were watching on an Apple TV and not Disney Plus. Cause I kept thinking this feels like a Disney movie. And yeah, like it made me feel good to watch it as a family movie, but also there were some dark themes to it or th- parts to it, obviously with like death and stuff like that. But like, it did just feel like a movie that you should watch with like your, like it was a movie that I felt like I had watched when I was like, te- you know, eight or nine or 10 years old. And it was an Amblin production kind of thing. And that's when I, when I was going back yeah. to that Amblin thing. So I was watching with my kids. I was kind of like, both my kids really liked it. Like they were glued to the movie the from one start that's to finish. Traumatized and in tears and probably had nightmares. Yeah. And I don't know because I didn't I find know, out until the next day. Him. I don't know what traumatized him. I don't know if it was um, Dewey getting smashed or if it was Tom Hanks dying. But he was upset at one oh, of the like family being murdered. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I mean, it, it kind of like, it kind of left that off to the side. Yeah. So he's probably fine. It's probably okay. But he, he he left for like five minutes and then came back and watched the rest of the movie. Hmm. So he just needed to like I think have feel his emotions with his mom and then come back come back to it. Not allowed. Um, you guys read anything about the dog? Other yeah. than it's an Irish uh what was it? An Irish 
uh, setter or something like that mix and i, I want don't know one. i just saw i just saw terrier i want one too oh irish terrier that's yeah. just an irish terrier Aww. mix yeah i don't know anything about the dog other than he's such a good boy let me tell you about this dog. boy such a good boy his he's name's seamus he's yes. a rescue dog yes, so he is. lived in he lived in homeless encampments he had to have like multiple surgeries to get a piece of plastic out that was lodged in his small intestine and then he was rescued um and I guess they brought in like a bunch of dogs and Tom Hank kind of like interacted all, with all of them. And then he saw Seamus and he was like, that's the dog. Because I guess his eyes just like conveyed so much. And they really did. He was such a good boy. Oh, okay. I changed it. Boy. 10 out of 10 movie. Seamus for Seamus. <laughs> Give Seamus oh, yeah. an Oscar. Yeah. What's, the, yeah. what's the ratings? So you got to put the ratings of how many uh, Seamuses out of 10 are we getting here? Oh, we're we doing the ratings now? Um... Well, I'm just asking. You said for you put 10 out of 10. So we're on, no, we're on the I mean... topic now. Let's go. I the shame is for is obviously a ten out of ten. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Five <laughs> minutes ago, before I knew about Seamus, I was going to say seven out of ten. Seven out of ten. That All was right. my that was my score. As a good family movie, I give it a six sweaty drawers out of ten because he was always sweating. He's 158 degrees. That guy was he somehow I'm survived. Fine. I don't know how he wasn't a prune when dehydrated. That man, yeah. <laughs> it was bloody hot. In that movie the entire time that's what you Gil, get. what would you give it like a five you can have um, a ten five out of ten um i i give it a six and i give it six uh booby trapped dog robots out of ten that broke my heart because it it, it made me feel things his little was... tennis ball leg twitching it's like ah! uh, <laughs> so <laughs> sad i i enjoyed it i felt all the things that the movie wanted me to feel it was a good time i wouldn't rewatch, but i'd i'd recommend for somebody that just wanted some like light viewing which again, mm -hmm. I think once in a while we just need something light that doesn't really have to mean anything too much, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I was just too stressed out the whole time. That's I wanted to do this light thing and I was just anxious the whole yeah. time. They if, said if you already up, feel anxious, it's not great. Yeah. No, yeah, I was feeling very anxious and they set it up real high stakes, like Rob said, like right off the bat and then petered it out. But I'm like, are we not in the high stakes mm -hmm. still? Mm -hmm. when, did you, when did we stop this? I know. Uh, we have high yeah. stakes, the high stakes storm's trying to kill yeah. you, and then to well, bandit. You, then you knew he was gonna die. You knew he was yeah. gonna die at the end, so you're just like waiting for that to happen. And oh god, are they gonna be okay without him? And, the, and, show... and that's maybe it doesn't. I mean, they show that the dog and robot bonded, but are they okay? I don't know. I like that it ended that yeah. way because I like that they were just on the cusp of sort of that. That um, that's how I interpret it when they got up to that rock face or whatever you want to call the protrusion of rocks and it was all kind of desert and aired on one side but the other side was all green and everything else they're just crossing over the threshold into something hopefully a better life so that a new life starts that's how i took it as and like tom hanks is, was a caretaker for the dog uh, for seamus <laughs> uh good year and then now there's a new aspect of a new life and it's in better better place so i was like okay cool i like i can be okay with the way that ended so the ending left you hopeful not worried it also didn't make just shove it in your face and be like, this is what you're supposed to think. It left you kind of to, you know, they gave you, just as you said, enough to be hopeful, but we're not going to spell it out for you. So I like those movies more than the movie taking all the way the imagination out of it. Just like, you know, this is how it is. Yeah. So you're not, there's nothing, there's no uh, curiosity to it. I like some curiosity to the movie. Mm -hmm. I, admit, I like Tom Hanks' <laughs> choice of vehicles because he chose big aggressive vehicles and all that. The RV yeah. I saw, I was like, oh my god, he's driving in. I was actually going to get mad at this. I'll be, I'll be very. I'll, if you guys let me rant for two seconds, I was going <laughs> to explode if he walked, if he drove out in a post-apocalyptic world in a fucking 1976 tin Winnebago, like just a shitty old Winnebago. And I showed it. I was like, oh Christ sakes, you got to fight the world and bandits and tornadoes and crazy UV radiation in a 1976 Winnebago. And he came out in this like a uh, Winnebago on steroids. Like it was like, ah, okay, yeah. fine, I can buy yeah. this now. He prepared Before, it a little bit. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, and that scene though where that huge tornado came and they just like <laughs> barely hung on to that one spike. I'm like, all right, that's yeah, hung on just long enough. That the would absolutely that, destroy uh, him. The spike that Jeff cranked down extra hard though. Yeah. 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 I don't have anything other really for discussion points. I have a I have a synopsis that kind of shows you exactly what you need to know about this movie. If, if if nobody else has any other discussion points. We're in, I have one thing. Oh, I'm taking the waiting? silence as no. Oh, I'm sorry, say, Rob was saying. Was, was anybody waiting for Jeff to take that tennis ball to throw it for Goodyear and just go, poof, and oh, just yeah. gone? So far? Yes. Yeah. Like, yes. 
I'm like, all right, there's going to be a joke here. And he just threw it. I was like, am I mad that they didn't do the joke or am I happy that they did do the joke? Oh, I didn't sense <laughs> joke. I sensed danger. I thought he was going to throw it and it was going to go to like a dangerous area or something. And that's what I was worried oh, about. Rest. I was worried about the dog the whole movie. Me too. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. So I was good. I'm right in the middle there. Yeah. I, I'll put a picture at the end here, but I watched it with my dog's head on my knee the entire movie. So picture i put it i put it in discord for everyone to see but uh I, so the whole time i'm petting my dog while watching the movie which also probably heightened my, oh my um God. my relating so i didn't watch it in like the cleanest of circumstances with my kids and my dog um okay so synopsis the best way to watch it yeah i mean i th i think it, that's probably how it should be watched You're if you want to have the most en most enjoyability no children no dog just... yeah the movie re reiterate the movie like looks great the acting is actually i would say phenomenal like the acting was really good the special mm -hmm. effects were really good Here's my synopsis. And this, I don't really miss much, I don't think, in this synopsis. Opening scene, scavenging. Life in the apocalypse with his dog. Threat of a storm coming. Plan to leave. Leaving montage. Activate robot. Robot training montage. Travel montage with Finch and Jeff relating to each other a little bit. Tornado. Finch and Jeff relate to each other a little bit. There's a hospital scene with some danger. Finch and Jeff relate to each other a little bit more. The relationship grows. There's a car chase. Finch and Jeff, they find some clean air. They talk about postcards. Jeff airs his baggage. He plays with his dog a final time, passes away. The dog ends up trusting Jeff after all. They complete their journey in San Francisco with a postcard, ending Finch's journey by posting the postcard that his dad sent him. And that's the synopsis of the movie. Oh, and there's not yep. really much more to talk about than that because that's that kind of shows to me. When I wrote this up, I'm like, the movie's really simple. It's just like realistically it's like 10 things like 10 scenes happen and in those scenes it's the same thing kind of happens it's just something happens and it, it requires the characters to like interact with each other or grow or talk or whatever and then it goes on to the next scene so the movie was very simple it didn't really have like a big storyline it just was going from an a to z point and a relationship between mostly finch and jeff i was there for it didn't love it but it was good enough for me probably won't watch it again oh well, just as like teal says like it wasn't 100% necessarily needed, and it's certainly not one that I would probably like put in a rotation. Like I'll watch it once or twice a year, kind of thing. Yeah. But it's, it's. Would good. you watch a sequel? I would have to see the trailer. I'll be honest. I don't know okay. if I would. Okay. And, uh, I, I, I would will, watch. I would probably watch wouldn't see the trailer, so she would be like. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, would I watch it? I don't know. <laughs> I would watch it, but I have a feeling it would ruin the, the charm that the first one had. Yeah, like it ended in Teal. the right spot. Teal could maybe watch it if she had some like CBD first. I mean, I like the way it ended. Yeah. I like it ending and not telling you one hundred percent how it worked out. So I like that because mm -hmm. I think it gets your mind thinking about the story and the journey, as as Jim was saying, and and they grow the whole way. And I think sometimes we have, we see too many movies that. You know, it ended. Everything worked out. Everybody wins, and then you're left with like, okay, well, next movie, please. There's no, it's no thought provocation. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks for hanging <laughs> out, guys. <laughs> All right. See you guys. All right. Bye, bye, everyone. Bye. See you.